Hi, everybody. This is Tim Krause. I'm uh, following up today. Uh, gosh, I published a, a uh, video on Believe the Sign and on my own channel a week or so ago, and I'm following up to let you know I received a lot, and I mean a lot of commentary and a lot of feedback uh, based on the video and uh, based on uh, what was said in the video, I have to tell you, um, I, I received a lot of comment from a lot of people that found my video incredibly objectionable. And, uh, and, and in on, frankly, I understand, the comments, you come by the comments honestly, particularly if you're from Tim Pruitt or Donnie Reagan's assembly. But I want to assure everybody, I want to let everybody know, we, you know, we go to Scripture. We do things because we follow Scripture. We take the example of the Bereans, and we make sure that what we hear, what we read, and what we see actually aligns with the Word of God. And let's remember salvation, the common salvation that's found in the book of Acts. First, Peter tells everyone on the day of Pentecost uh, that they, you know, that the Holy Spirit is there and that they're not drunk. And in fact, they've, that the Holy Spirit's come over them, you know, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, be baptized for the remissions of sin, and you will receive the Holy Spirit. Now, that's the simple salvation. We see Paul address that later on in the book of Acts, where he tells the jailer, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. Salvation is really a simple idea. It's very, very difficult because you actually have to submit to to profession of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in order to be saved. But it's a very simple idea. It's a very simple notion. Uh, we're very confident in our salvation. I appreciate the difference of opinions among those of you who commented. I appreciate the fact that you have a different opinion about who's going to go to hell or who's not going to be in heaven. I bless your hearts. I appreciate that. But again, we, we go back to Scripture. We're very sure of our salvation. We're very clear about what that is. I, you know, it's an interesting thing. We go through this process, and our goal is to educate people about uh, what a prophet of God really is, whether or not we need a Gentile prophet after a transition in the covenant from the old covenant to the new covenant. And if we needed a Gentile prophet or a New Testament prophet, which Scripture clearly tells us that we do not need an intercessor between ourselves and Christ. That's why the curtain in the tabernacle tore from top to bottom when Christ was crucified on the cross to expose Christ to everybody. That's why Christ, during his great commission, told his disciples to go unto all the world, including the Gentile nations. That's why, you know, we, we read that St. Paul, uh, the apostle, had a uh, an epiphany, epiphany about what some of the other disciples were teaching some of the Gentiles, how they had to be circumcised and how they had to follow the Mosaic law. Paul cleaned that up for them and, and told them that that was not a requirement for the Gentiles. We understand the difference between the new and the old covenant, and we're, we're delighted that we live in a covenant where profession of faith is greeted with salvation and where grace is is the key factor there as opposed to the works and what we do and how we dress and what, the way we look. Um, and I understand that we talked about a, a sacred cow. We talked about a tenant of Brandonism uh, in terms of the message where women don't cut your hair. Uh, you know, that we, we kind of blew that up in the last video that we did when we talked about uh, Paul's letter to the Corinthians and how that was misrepresented or misstated uh, in the message and continues to be misrepresented and misstated. And I appreciate the fact that that you're not happy about that. Um, I get that. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're sure of our salvation. We're very clear that we are saved. 
and but we we really do appreciate the comments and the questions uh and you know we just want everybody to know that we do we take your comments to heart we just are very sure of our salvation and very clear and i appreciate the fact that there's anger but i want to make a statement here <clears throat> shouldn't you be angry with william branham as opposed to with us because what we do you see is we take what William Branham said in his sermons and we compare that directly to the Word of God just as the Bereans did we compare what William Branham said in his sermons directly to the Word of God we discover that William Branham taught things which were directly opposed to Scripture we we discover that William Branham uh, his prophecies and visions failed frequently. In fact, we can't find one that he told before the fact that actually came to pass. Even William Branham admits, in the case of some of the the prophecies he made, like the brown bear vision, that's thus saith the Lord, uh, using his, his self-proclaimed scriptural authority, he's going to get a brown bear next year, and he didn't, and he talks through that. Also, the 31 times where he speaks about how he's going to go to South Africa and have a meeting for 300,000, his last discussion about that particular issue was how he did not do that, and he was not able to do that. And he spoke those things using his scriptural authority, thus saith the Lord. So we actually can't find a prophecy or a vision that William Branham made prior to the fact that actually came to pass. And in some cases, the ones that he spoke as if they came to pass that he spoke of in the past have serious, serious issues about them. Uh, and for instance, the uh, the municipal bridge over the Ohio River and the 16 people that drowned on and I mean, we could just continue to go on and on and on. So, you know, another thing that we know about William Branham is he lied using the name of the Lord. That's thus saith the Lord. Now, he claimed to be a prophet over 400 times and over 1,100 sermons. He used his self-proclaimed scriptural authority 1,616 times in his 1,100 sermons during his ministry, 1,100 plus sermons during his ministry. So we know, you know, we, we can go back and look at what he said using that scriptural authority, claiming to be a prophet of God, comparing it directly to scripture, and we can discover where he just doesn't qualify as a prophet of God. So well, somebody asked me, uh, it, you know, we, we should just trust. Sometimes just trust me is a good explanation. And, you know, in some instances, just trust me is a great explanation. The challenge is uh, the person that speaks to you has to be trustworthy. And when you talk about William Branham and the fibs, we're going to put it nicely, the fibs he told, boy, they, it, it's hard to call William Branham trustworthy. So uh, I just wanted to let you know, your anger is okay, but you should be focusing your anger on William Branham, who fails in every scriptural aspect or through every scriptural and examination to be a prophet of God. So I appreciate the fact that a lot of people took it out on me this week. I got it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to encourage you to make sure you put your focus of your anger where it should belong. You should be angry, and you should be angry at William Branham because he fails to qualify as a prophet of God. He taught things that didn't align with Scripture. He lied using his self-proclaimed scriptural authority, thus saying the Lord. His visions and prophecies failed to come to pass. And uh, so I, I appreciate that. We, you know, bless, bless your hearts. I understand that you come by it honestly. Uh, I understand that Tim Pruitt and Donnie Reagan are, you know, examples for their assemblies, and we played what they said, and, you know, but we just wanted to make sure people understood we are very, very sure of our salvation. We're very secure in the fact that we are saved. And uh, we're also very secure in the fact that William Branham was not a prophet of God. We're very, very clear about that. So, um we just wanted to make sure that we followed up and let everybody know. Thank you. Thank you for your comments and your feedback. We really do appreciate it. We had some good positive feedback, too. So 
Uh, I want that to want people to know that. Feel for listen. Make sure you contact us if you have any questions or any issues at all that you'd like to ask. If you'd like us to clarify scripturally our assertions, we're happy to do that for you. We are happy to do that for you because we want to make sure that everybody understands the scriptural foundation for what we say or what our assertions are. So feel free to ask us anything you need to in terms of the scriptural foundations for any of our assertions. We're happy to follow up with that. Uh, in the meanwhile, thank you so much for your comments that were positive and negative. We we really are assured of our salvation. We understand what salvation is scripturally, and we're very assured of our foundation of script of uh, salvation. So, uh, God bless everybody. Hope everybody has a great week, and we'll be looking forward to doing another uh, uh, video with more content in it that compares William Branham's sermons directly to the Word of God. God bless everybody, and I hope you have a great week. Bye-bye now. Mm -hmm.